What is Charles Law? Well, in this video, I'm gonna go over the graph for Charles Law, a particulate view that's underneath here. Um, I'm gonna talk about the fact that it needs to be in Kelvin. This set of notes you can use on the inside are these graphs and particulate views if you print this double-sided. And then there's also room for you to put the two example problems that I'm gonna work in this video also. In addition to that, I'm gonna go over a model of it also. So here's our first example that we're gonna to work together. And then here's the second example that you're gonna work on your own, pause the video and see if you get it right, okay? So before we do those example problems, I'm gonna go over what Charles Law is and model it with um, a particular view and an actual set of you know pretend gas particles here. All right, so what happens with Charles Law is that we have a gas sample and to keep the pressure constant and we keep the moles constant, if we alter the temperature, the volume has to adjust to keep that pressure constant for that specific sample of moles of gas particles. So for example, if the temperature goes up, the volume also has to go up, so they're directly related. Okay, this is a direct relationship, and our temperature will have to be in Kelvins. We'll get to that actually later in the video. And this is the gas law. So they're going to be ending, you know, you're going to divide the variables instead of multiplying like in my Boyle's Law video because they're directly related. So again, let me say that one more time. So to keep the pressure constant for that sample of moles of gas particles, if we increase the temperature, then the volume also has to be increased. So for example, let me move this off. You will need those things later. But I kind of drew it out for you. And again, this is actually on the inside of this already, on the other side of that. And if the temperature goes up to keep the pressure constant, which is collisions with the walls of the container, then the volume also has to go up to keep that pressure the same. So the other thing I did was I drew some what are called vector arrows. On average, the vector arrows here, or the movement I'm trying to show, which is the kinetic energy, on average is a specific maybe lower temperature. And then on average, these vectors are longer. The little arrows are showing on average that the temperature has increased because their kinetic energy has gone up. All right, and that's also like a little temperature gauge on the side. So instead of just showing you a particulate view, I also want to try to show you with an actual set of you know, pretend gas particles. So here is my you know, original sample. It has this pressure. Okay? So that's the collisions of the walls of the container. I have a set number of moles. And the kind of the movement I was giving it is the temperature, and then it occupies this volume. Now, with the example that I'm giving you, I'm going to have to change the volume by moving these over. But normally what would happen is you'd, you know, have a balloon or some kind of syringe or piston. And what would happen is the temperature would go up. Then the gas particles would collide in a way that they would make the volume increase. So what would happen then is your second sample, let me just lay these out, okay? So this would have to just all of a sudden change to this volume because the temperature went up. What that means is I am, you know, giving them a higher kinetic energy here, but the collisions with the walls of the container on average, the pressure is the same. But because the volume is larger, the, uh, the temperature has to go up to keep the pressure the same, okay? So that's kind of the model of it that usually this one's a hard one for people to understand. So I'm pull these back out one more time. To keep that pressure the same, I can't say this enough, you have to have the volume, if the volume uh, goes up because the temperature goes up, it does that in correlation, again, in direct correlation, so that the pressure can remain the same, the collisions with the walls of the container, okay? And again, like I said, I would add in those little uh, vector arrows on average. The arrow length is trying to show you we're at a higher temperature and the average length of all of these arrows are trying to show you we're at a lower temperature, okay? And again, that was the difference between this container versus this one and then the movement that I gave those. Okay, on to the practice problems, okay. But to make sure the practice problems make sense, I think it's always important to draw your graphs and you know your particulate views. So I'm gonna keep a couple things out here. Temperature has to be in Kelvin. I'm going to grab my little, my little you know, set of notes here that I've created for you where I've got my equation sitting right here. And then I've got my calculator ready to use also. So let's just kind of read the problem. We've got a sample of gas. Starts out at a uh, original volume of 0 0.256, 0 0.256 liters. And the initial temperature, sometimes again, they use little eyes here. I like to use one, was um, 121 degrees Celsius, okay? So 121. Now I need that in Kelvin, so I'm just gonna do this right away. I'm gonna add in 273 to convert this into Kelvin. So what you do is you just take your 121 plus 273, 
you could use 273.15 and we get 394 Kelvin. Now, if you had this and you printed it correctly, on the back here, I actually have all of your gas variables um, and there's your little conversion for Kelvin. Also, some other things we're gonna use later, this Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution actually has to do with uh, average kinetic energy. And last but not least, you've got your kinetic molecular theory for ideal gas particles on the back. Okay, so, but we're gonna to go to the math now. So now what I need to do is find out, well, what are my new, my new variables or my new temperatures and volume? So we have a new volume of, we don't know, okay? So we're trying to find that. It says final volume, we don't know. Again, you could put a little F there instead of a two. And then we do know we cooled it to 32. So before you even do again any of the math, think of the graph, okay? Think of the particulate view. We're going down in temperature, kind of the opposite of what I did. So what should happen to the volume? So when we're done calculating, hopefully it'll make sense. But again, we have to convert to uh, Kelvin. So this will give us a temperature of, let's just do this together, 32 plus 273, I get 305, okay? And again, I do have to have my units matching, and in this case, they must be Kelvin for temperature. And then these have to also be the same, which they are, which is liters. Okay, so now let's just get going with the actual problem so that we can uh, move on to the one that you're going to try. All right, just going to move a couple things around here for myself. And let's just get going. So we're going to take our V1 divided by T1 equals V2 divided by T2. Now for this one, it's kind of nice. I just have to isolate to get V two by itself. So I'm just gonna multiply both sides by T2 like this. And then what that does is it cancels out the T2 because again, I'm trying to isolate for the V2. But our second problem is gonna be a little more tricky because this gas law and all the ones that are dividing can cause a lot of problems for those of you with like not so you know confident algebra skills. So there's my equation. So I'm just gonna write it kind of big here, V2, and then I'm gonna have T2. So just make sure now you go grab the right one. So that's 305, because this is usually where you know human error comes in pretty, pretty prevalent. And then your volume one was 0.256 liters. And then our new temperature, or sorry, I shouldn't say the new temperature, the old temperature, the initial was 394, I even almost said it wrong too, okay? So get, get those in the right spot so that you don't make a mistake. And then I'll just calculate this with you. So you take 305 times 0.256 and then divide it by 394 and I get 0 0.198172, I'm gonna stop writing them, okay? Because again, I have three sig figs and everything, I gained kind of some sig figs when I converted it to Kelvin. So V2 is gonna actually be 0.198 liters. But again, what I want you to always do, because you're gonna make human errors for sure, okay? Copy things down wrong, calculate something down wrong. Always go back again, I gotta grab this graph one more time. Go back to the fact that the temperature went down, we cooled it, so the volume also should go down. And it did, it started out at 0.256 and now it's down to 0.198. Again, because there is a direct relationship between these. All right, so let's get you onto your practice problem that you can try. So here it is, you can pause the video and write it down. And then I'm gonna reveal the answer kind of above it because I gave you a little bit more challenging problem here. So write that down and try it yourself. And then here we go, here's the answer for it. I'll try to show you some of it at you know, the same time here. So you start with your given, and you've got your two givens. You have to convert uh, this one to Kelvin. But because T2 is in the denominator, this usually causes a lot of problems with students with algebra that is not your confident you know, skill in life. So this is another arrangement of the equation that I find helpful for my students to have. So you could add that to the front of that foldable, uh, or the set of notes. Let me grab it again one more time. Got lots of paper here. So you may wanna just add this one on top. That's why I actually left you some room to give you another version of it. And that's gonna help you isolate. So let me show you what I did then. I took kind of this equation and then I divided both sides by V1. And that allowed me to get T2 by itself then. And you can do the same thing with this equation. You know, this is kind of the standard form that you're gonna see. But usually students have trouble moving the variables around. So it's nicer if it's listed almost, be careful, almost like it looks like Boyle's Law, but it's not because 
the initials and the finals actually are next to each other where these are not, okay? Then you have T2, so I'm just gonna move this off. Um, and then you can put in your numbers. So you've got your V2, which is five. Your temperature, which would be the 288, which would be the T1, um, be careful. And then V1 was 2.5. So the temperature has gone up a lot. Now again, one more time. Let me even grab the picture and the particulate view. We had the volume had to go up. And the only way that can happen if we hold pressure in moles constant is the temperature also has to go up. So it's almost like the, the original picture I gave you where I started with this, but I want a bigger volume. So the temperature I need should be higher. And I did get a much higher temperature for that. I did have to convert to Kelvin and then subtract the 273 to get it back to Celsius because that was what the question wanted in the very beginning, which was right here, okay? All right, well, I hope that helped you. And again, like I said, if you want, this is in the description below. I just taped it together kind of here. Um, and like I said, the graphs and the images I'm gonna have on the inside and room to calculate you know, examples on the bottom half that's open. And I do hope to you know, make an Avogadro, Galusac, uh, combined and Dalton's uh, videos at some point. Um, and again, on the back, there's even room for Gastoic. And I did do a video on pressure conversion. So hopefully right here, you can use that video to write down how to convert with your pressure units. We didn't have in this question, but we did with Boyle's Law. All right. All right. Good luck, chemists. And I hope you watch another video that I made for you.